In the, the short period of time that I've been here, I've come to know some people that moved here and we got into this big debate about whether you should buy a place here or rent. I always argue that you should rent first. You should come here and make sure that this is where you want to live. So you rent a place for six months or even a year, figure out that perfect spot that you want to live and then you can buy. There's nothing worse than coming here and buying a piece of property and wake up one day and realize that you don't really think that this is the place for you and you're not comfortable and you don't want to be here and the honeymoon's over with and you want to go somewhere else and you pack up and leave the country and you got to sell your property. I wouldn't want to be in that position. I finally got a chance to sit down and talk to Stella Coulter and we talk about renting apartments here and when I come back I'm going to show you the interview I did with her today. Hey! Oh, rock a cheek, rock a Hello there. So there you are. <laughs> <laughs> we finally get a chance to talk. We've been trying to do this for months, and lots of people have asked me, "Where is Stella? Where is Stella?" You know, you are the real estate rental aficionado here in Monta, right? So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Stella Coulter. I've been living most of my life here in Manta. I lived a few years in California. And uh, one, one of my son was born here in Ecuador and the other one was born in uh, California. And uh, I am the daughter of uh, one of the first expats that came over to Manta, it was in 1955. And uh, he married a local, that's my mother. They were happily married for uh, many years. And uh, I, uh, my father used to, he was American engineer. He goes back and forth. Every time his, uh, some of his uh, uh, contracts finish overseas, he used to come over here and stay and relax here until he gets another job. Because you know, Manta is the cheapest place to live actually, mm -hmm. then and now. Yeah. And um, so that's, that's my story. But what's interesting is the fact that you've traveled all over the world. Oh yes. Where I, were you born? I was born in Iraq. So you were born and in my Iraq. brother yeah. was born in Spain. Yeah. My father was from North Carolina. Mm. And my mother from here, Manta. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I lived in Africa a few years also when I was a teenager. And um, then we went to Bolivia and we, we've been in many places yeah. until he retired when he was 62 years old. Okay. I, when he was 62 years old, I was 17. Mm -hmm. So uh, from then on, I stayed here. Okay, so before we get to actually talking about the business, their mental business. I couldn't help but notice your bracelet. What's, oh. what's your This tell is us about sentimental. That. This is my mother's uh, favorite bracelet. Yeah. She has this, you know, from all over the world and the thing she bet all over where she, she see this is from uh, France. Yeah. So she likes uh, this is her favorite and I like to wear it because I feel like she's here with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So people that come here, expats come here, everybody is looking for a place to live, obviously, whether it's short term or long term, whether to rent or buy. Let's get this out on the table right now. What should be, what should these people do? Should they rent and then buy later or should they just come here and buy? What, what, I've asked other realtors about this. What is your thought about that? My advice is they should, if, they, if it's the first time they come here, they should rent mm -hmm. for six months or a year so they get familiar with Manta and uh, see if they like the, the culture, the food, the weather, yeah. everything. So if, if they are happy, then later on he, they could buy it. But that's my advice. First, rent. Yeah. So then what is the process of renting an apartment? I know it's probably different with everybody because every apartment is owned by different people, right? Yeah. So what is, give us a typical example of the process of going through renting an apartment. 
you show them you, yes. you, you have you you know where all these apartments yes. are yeah i know and, it. yes go ahead and and, and 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 then so they call you they still i need to rent an apartment for six months or three months or whatever short term or long term what is the first thing you do i mean you had first you had to find you had to know where the apartments are so take us from there what is the process of renting an apartment here because it's we know what it's like in the united states but it's a lot different here it's completely different yeah well here because i've been living here most of my life i i know most of the people and uh, i the apartment they are my friends apartments so uh, so then what I do is uh, I, call, I call them, I say, do you, is your apartment available? So I send pictures. I send pictures and then I will get a time, a date, and we come show the apartment. And uh, if they like it, then I talk back to the owner, to the landlord, and then we do business. Yeah, negotiate for a price. Right. Yes, right. So do, what is the deposit structure like? And it's probably not the same for everybody. Depends on the landlord. Okay. Uh, if you are more than a year, usually they, they want two months mm -hmm. of uh, deposit. So if that's first month and last month? Is that the way that? No. Okay. No, it's first month, okay. uh, first month and two months of uh, deposit. Okay. When the, when, when the lease ends, then we go back, I check the apartment, everything is okay. Mm -hmm. We give the money back, but it, we, you know, electricity and water comes late. So we just uh, call the company, the electric company, or wait until the, uh, the, comes the, um, the, the bill. Mm -hmm. And what we do is, Tell them, you know, you spend fifty dollars in electricity. We deduct from that deposit and give your money back. Oh, I see what you're talking about. You're talking so, like when they leave, there's obviously going to be some indebtedness, mm -hmm. to, indebtedness to right. the utility companies. It could be the same thing for cable or gas or exactly. water, or everything. Yes, right. Okay, so you wait until you, you basically you settle all accounts and then you give them their deposit exactly. back. Okay, yes. all right. And then, but now not everybody wants two months up front though, right? Yes, yeah. Oh. Uh, that's, most of it is one month deposit. Mm -hmm. When it's six months, it's one month deposit. Okay. And what, first month rent. All right. Yes. Okay. But mostly it's always one month. All right. It depends, like I said, it depends on the landlord. Okay. What about availability? What, I know it changes by season. We have here, what's called the low season and the high season. Explain that to, to me, please. Well, you know, it, it's difficult because we have high season. Lately with uh, the, the Canadians, mm -hmm. with the cold weather and the Americans also, they come, they start in November. Okay. They come over for four months. Okay. And also the people from Quito. People from Quito, the, the school ends in December over there. It's different from the coast, yeah. so they come over too. They do. The people from Quito have many uh, units here, and they, they come. The family come over. So it's we we have a uh, sometimes it's difficult to find apartments. Yeah. Yeah. But then you can then and then all of a sudden there's you wake up one day and now there's apartments everywhere. It also, yeah. yes. Yeah. But that's for all the more reason why people need to get in touch with you, get in touch with you well ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't wait until they come here, like I did. <laughs> <laughs> but also, the uh, landlord, Equatorian landlords don't like to wait. Sometimes the clients call me and they said, I'm, like now it's July, yeah. and they say, I'm coming on December. Yeah. And I call the landlord, I say, you know, there's a client that wants in, well, it's, it's far away. They usually like a month before yeah. to save the apartment. Okay. So does Airbnb cause you any problems as far as competition? I mean, what's, how do you feel about that? I know Airbnb is here. Yes. I've heard horror stories about some people, experiences with Airbnb, and then I hear people talk about that they wouldn't do anything else, you know? I mean, I know that people contact you for, I'm going to be here for six weeks. Well, you're not going to go looking for an apartment for them 
Are you, do you just refer them to Airbnb or? They what? call, I don't work in Airbnb. Right. And it's, uh, Airbnb usually it's two, three, five days. Yeah. I don't do that. I, I do the referral or I just say, I'm sorry, but I don't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm mm -hmm. not familiar with Airbnb. Yeah. And also what I do is I uh, do, um, manage apartments. Yes. Yeah, so I have a few apartments that I manage. Uh, the owners are from the United States and Canada. And those, the ones that I, uh, take, I take care of them too. Yeah. yeah. So, of course, you, you probably get a lot of calls from people that want to be on the beach. Explain the difference between, when I came here, I thought beachfront property. You actually explained to me that there's beachfront property and then there's ocean view, ocean view property. I have an ocean view apartment. I'm not on the beach, but then, but there are both types available here all up and down this coastline, yes, right? Right. So just a broad scale range. What do you say are the differences between for as far as pricing is concerned, because I've heard figures all over the place. You know, uh, what is what is the exact? What can people expect to pay yes. to rent okay. an apartment? The ocean front is much more. Okay, yes. ocean so front. Yeah. Ocean front is much more. So if it's a two two bedroom apartment, it's going to be uh, let's say twelve hundred. Mm -hmm. Second row on ocean view, it's going to be. 750. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the difference. But, but, but can you also negotiate for a better price? Because well, everybody, we talk about this all the time, the expat community, they always say negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. So when you say 750, is it more fair to say that there's a range like from 650 to 850? There's or, a range for it. Yeah, yes. there's a range. Yeah. Okay. Um, second of all, yes. There's mm -hmm. a, from 800 to 650. Yeah. It depends on the building also. The building, yeah. One building might not have amenities, a pool mm -hmm. or a gym, so it's, it costs less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about security? All the buildings, if you notice that, mm -hmm. all the buildings have 24 hour security. Okay. All of them. So, and then I guess people can also expect to pay a lot less money to be away from the beach. Right. I mean, you can yeah. rent. You can rent. There's rentals in down in Monta, right? I mean, there is, of course, you know. inner city. You can find um, apartments, two bedrooms, even three mm -hmm. uh, big ones uh, for six hundred. Yeah. And uh, or get a community ten minutes from the city. Mm -hmm. You can find for three fifty, four hundred. Yeah. And it's not only apartments, there's houses also available? There's houses, but yeah. not ne there's no houses oceanfront in right. the city. Okay. Right. There, were, uh, there were houses. All those buildings that you've seen mm -hmm. in front of your apartment, all of them are, uh, they were houses. Mm -hmm. And they sold it to make buildings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a building on my street called Santorini. Everybody around here knows Santorini pretty popular place. Is it fair to say that probably the majority of that place is owned by Ecuadorians? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And but they're not here all the time. I mean there's Yes. Most of them live overseas. Yeah. Most of them are from Quito also. Yeah. yeah. What about Guayaquil? Quito is most mostly but Quito. There's yeah. Guayaquil also but Quito The big is money in this country is just seems to be in Quito. Quito. Yeah. Well Quito and Guayaquil, but Guayaquil has Salinas. Yes. So so yeah. they have um, there's a lot of buildings in Salinas. And, and the Guayaquil people have uh, own mm -hmm. apartments in Salinas, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the process of renting, we talked about that. Is there an actual formal lease agreement that they have to sign to rent an apartment here? Uh, yes, uh, yeah. Okay. Always. I know that, I remember when I came here, and you can explain this to the family here, that when I came in here and I signed my lease on my apartment, you had to take that lease somewhere yes, uh, and do something with it, and yeah. then you brought it back. What was that? Okay, there's, we do three, there's three contracts, three leases mm -hmm. that you have to sign. One is for the owner, or the landlord. The other one is for you. Mm -hmm. And the other one is for the, uh, for the office where we go. It's like the notary yeah. or the, uh, I don't know, 
Cámara de Comercio, we call it, mm -hmm. I don't know in, Spanish, in English, Cámara de Comercio. Okay. And uh, where we go there, and th that's where we take all of them, and if they check, it's everything is correct, the cedulas, everything is fine. So they, uh, they approve, they seal it, and then I go back and give it to you. Yeah. Do you have to have a passport to rent an apartment? Of course. You do? You, ne you need an ID, your passport yeah. or your cedula. Okay. I mean, you, can, you, you, don't, you, don't need, you don't have to have your cedula. You, your passport is just fine. Yeah, well, your passport is good for 90 days, and it can be days. renewed yeah, for but, another 90 days. Yeah, so. yeah. So if somebody's coming here for 90 days, then their passport's sufficient to give them as, as far as it's ID enough. is yes. concerned. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about paying utilities and like internet? Oh, I forgot and, to tell you. Mm -hmm. to, to notarize this uh, the lease, they want a year. Okay. So if it's less than a year, we, we cannot do it. So it doesn't get notarized? Not, yes. So then what do you have? You just have an agreement? That's agreement, an yes. Agreement. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I've heard horror stories, <laughs> you know how people talk. I've heard horror stories about people having trouble getting deposits back. I haven't had any trouble getting my deposit back, but I have heard that in some locations there are some landlords that have a reputation for being pretty difficult giving their deposit back. Has that been, is that for real or is that Wait. just talk? Uh, maybe, I don't know. I. Ha I haven't had that problem at okay. all. And I've okay. been working for a few years in this and I didn't have that problem at all. If there is some kind of difficult, I make sure they get their money back. Yeah. I make sure of that. Okay, so when somebody comes in and they sign a lease, they pay you a deposit. Where does that money go, that deposit okay. money? If the landlord lives overseas, I keep the money. Okay. And when they leave, I check out that everything is okay, I give back the money. Okay. If the landlords are here, they, they will take, they the, take money. the money, yes. yeah. But and I'll be calling like 15 days before I say, now remember, we yeah. are leaving. Yeah. Don't forget about giving back the deposit. Yeah, I remember that they, when I was in the first apartment, they actually gave me a check. Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, you, you, you were uh, okay with that because, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it was a check from the United States, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The only problem I had with it is they misspelled my name. Yeah. And but I just took it to my my friend at Jap and he mm -hmm. got it to prove and they took it for a yeah. deposit. I think they held it, you know. Mm -hmm. So so does not everybody includes utilities in a rent? Some people had to pay for utilities. So explain the process of doing that. Let's talk about internet. Mm -hmm. So if somebody comes here and rents an apartment and let's say it's six hundred dollars mm -hmm. plus internet. Mm -hmm. Internet's probably going to cost anywhere from twenty-five to thirty-five dollars. How do they pay that bill each month? Well, kind of uh, a tough question. Usually, I know. <laughs> usually, the rent is included uh, internet because mm -hmm. internet is not expensive here and it's right. a good one. Mm -hmm. Internet. And HOA fee. Okay. It's included on the rent. Okay. What about electricity? Electricity, no. Everybody has to pay electricity. Okay. So, how do most people pay that bill at the end of the month? Because I know it's it's a bit of an ordeal. Yes, I know. Yeah. I know. So let's let's even get for it us. out front here. Yeah. Even for me. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so in my um, case, I go to Western Union. Yeah. I usually you know. I usually recommend Western Union if mm -hmm. you don't want to be in a line in the bank. If you notice here, yeah. all the banks have long lines. They always have one. And yeah. you pay 25 cents more. I think in the bank is, uh, commission is 25 uh, cents, and if you go to the Western Union, it's 50 cents, I yeah. think it is, something like that. Yeah. So you just go to Western Union, they, I'll give you the number of the, um, or, or the, the number that I have to give you for the electricity, mm -hmm. And with that number, you just hand it to the girl there, and she said, okay, it's $55 for electricity. You pay, you get your receipt, and that's it. That's it, and it's yeah. done. Mm -hmm. And seniors, they come here thinking they're going to get a discount on all this stuff. Doesn't always work that way with because it's not, like the electric bill is not in their name, oh, right? No. Yes. So we need name. to make sure people understand mm -hmm. that. Yes, yes. A lot, I, because I came here, me being over 65, I thought, well, I'll get half off my electric bill. No, it didn't work that way because it's not in my name. So, okay, and I can understand that. In Monta, 
you know, there's different areas. Where's, where should they not look for a place to live and where's the best place to look to, for a place to live? Like say in terms of quietness, peace and quiet. Oh yeah, you know? you're talking about, yeah. Like I, like I always say, this is a noisy country. <laughs> People here are always happy. They're having parties everywhere. Yeah. There are barking dogs. <laughs> So, um, horns, you know, the, yeah, the, the taxi is everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere. There's so, noise. what are we supposed to do when we hear loud music? You have to bring your earplugs. <laughs> but you told me something else one time. You said you dance. Uh, yeah, you go ahead and yeah. go ahead and dance. Go, go to the party. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. Have a couple of drinks. <laughs> oh God! Yeah. All right, so I'm I'm pretty preferential to the Marseille Lago area. Mm -hmm. I think it's quieter here yeah. than in say Barbaskill. You know, well, I, there's great places to live in Barbaskill, yes. no doubt. You know, but there are different noise levels from different parts of the city. You know, and you're right. People just have to learn. I and I tell people this all the time. You have to learn how to deal with it. You know, yes. and you can, you can do with it. Well, there's well, some foam earplugs work great. I told you. you know, they work awesome. So. so I, what I, but they also there's a gated community like 10 minutes out of Manta, mm -hmm. the, like Ciudad del Mar. Ciudad del Mar is, yeah. is a nice place. Sí, de, de Ciudad, yeah. Ciudad del Mar, very nice place. And it's quiet there. Mm -hmm. There's no business around. Right. It's a gated community. But also you can have your neighbor, Ecuadorian neighbor who have, mm -hmm. you want to have a party. Yeah, and you can rent in there. Can you rent? Of in course. Yes, Del yes, Mar? Yes, okay. Yes. What about Monte Beach? Monte Beach, the same. Same way. Yes, okay. You can all rent right. there. Yeah, Monte Beach, you can rent. So, of all the areas around here, where do you rent most of your apartments? Is there? I usually the buildings in Murcielago. Okay. Yeah. I also have in Ciudad del Mar, mm -hmm. and there's also um, Monte Beach, uh, 2000. That's another gated yeah. community. And also there is a uh, Ciudad del Sol, mm -hmm. Ciudad del Sol, Ciudad, la, del, Ciudad Sol. del Sol. Okay. Those are little houses, uh, two stories, yeah. three bedrooms, and that one it's um, it's it goes in 500, 600, and 700. Yeah, uh, it's nice, like 10 minutes or less. You, Mm -hmm. Maybe walk, walking from there to, to uh, town will give you maybe 20 minutes. Yeah. And your car will be seven. And it's, in, it's nice also and quiet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that one of the reasons why I like Marseille Lago so much is because of the mall, mm -hmm. the pl close proximity to the mall, and also to the beach. Okay. You know? Well, most of my clients, are, they want close to the mall mm -hmm. and, and walking distance to the beach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Central Market and all the other great shopping areas are all like a, anywhere from a dollar fifty to three dollar taxi ride, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. okay. So one last question. Mm -hmm. All right. Why should anybody call you to help them rent an apartment? This well, is your elevator yeah. speech, okay? Well, you know what? Uh, like I said, I live here most of my life. I know yeah. everybody. Yeah. So. Uh, now, everybody knows you too. We yes, we yeah, we yeah. come to find yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're so uh, shy. Well, I have to. Can I add, add up something else? Yeah. Okay. Well, I I got into this uh, real estate uh, business. Uh, I met these expats. A, a couple, uh, these couple expats uh, from the United States, Al and Linda, and they um, they lived here many years, and we became very good friends, mm -hmm. very very good friends until this date. So one day he called me, and he he used to do that, you know. He, he used to when he was here, he used to uh, help the newcomers here, like Mark does. But at that time, there was no WhatsApp. Yeah. Or uh, and it was just uh, email. Mm -hmm. So he one day he had to go back and he told me, you know, Stella, do you want to do this? And I said yes. So I am very grateful with him for this. Yeah. 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 Okay, we're going to run out of time here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put your contact information in the description below. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, 
Do you, what is the best way to reach you? Is it through WhatsApp or is it through email or both? Or I what? love WhatsApp, okay. but email is okay. Yes, good. So I'm going to put your primary contact will be WhatsApp, and then secondary will be email. Yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks so much for talking. You're welcome. Thank Thanks you. for giving me your time. No, thank you. Finally, it's been thank a tough, tough thing to do. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. <laughs> See, it's a piece of cake.